Hey, welcome back to Drowning in Yarn. I'm Caleb. Today, I wanna to talk to you about my latest sweater project, which features an all over cable pattern. And I wanna tell you how I'm using stitch markers to make working with charts a breeze. I hope you'll stick around for the whole video, but if you're just here for the tips, then look in the description down below and you'll find some timestamps that will take you right to them. Also, while you're watching, if you're enjoying this, then hit that little like button. And while you're down there, hit that little subscribe button if you wanna stick around for more knitting and yarn related videos and hit that bell to get notified when I post new content. So my current sweater project is the Little Wave Sweater by Gudrun Johnston for Brooklyn Tweed and I've been working on it for probably a little over a month now and I am loving how it's working up. I love the texture of this cardigan. The twisted stitch cables are so fun and actually really easy to knit. They're just two stitch cables that you knit without even taking anything off the needles. You're not using a cable needle and you're just kind of double knitting into some of your stitches in this way that twists them and creates these really beautiful, really impactful cables. I think they're every bit as beautiful as more complex cables with multiple stitches crossing over that can feel kind of daunting. I also really love how subtle this texture is in this darker heathered yarn. It's a woolen spun yarn from Harrisville Designs called Highlands and it is so beautiful in this cardigan. I'm just so happy with how this is working out. But whenever I decided to start this project, I had a lot of anxiety about it and a lot of anxiety going into it. I first saw this pattern actually a really long time ago and just kind of put it out of my mind as something that was too complex to knit because of the all over cabled pattern and because of the amount of mental effort that I thought it was going to take to create this garment. And then flash forward to about a month and some change ago, and I decided that it was time to start a new sweater. Not even thinking about this pattern, I decided I was going to knit using one of the sweater quantities that was in my stash because I have a few and I need to use them. And as I was digging through the yarn that I have, I reacquainted myself with this Harrisville Designs Highlands yarn. So I decided I was going to find a pattern that was going to work really well with this sweater's quantity of yarn that I have. In that search, I happened upon the Little Wave cardigan pattern again, and one of the pattern pictures is Jared Flood in a cardigan that's in a very similar color to this charcoal that I'm using, and it looks amazing. And so I thought this will be perfect. Like there's no question this is the pattern. So you'd think that I immediately, you know, made a swatch and cast it on, but that's not the case. I put it out of my head again. So I kept looking for other patterns that I liked just as much that would work just as well with this yarn in this color. And I had to stop and ask myself, why are you still looking? You found the perfect thing. And the answer was I was doing it out of fear of the complexity of the pattern. I just don't typically knit things with all over textures, not cabled textures. Usually if I do all over textures or things with lots of charts, it's just kind of a knit pearl pattern. And I was afraid of starting such a big project or something that felt like a big project because it seems like a big commitment. It's not only a commitment to creating this garment, it's a commitment to paying attention, to tracking everything and not messing up while I'm watching TV or talking or doing whatever I'm doing. And in my head, that seemed like it was going to create stress while I'm making this garment. It was gonna take a little bit of the fun and the joy out of it, which is silly because when I look at the pattern, it's beautiful that I want it. So I had to get out of my own way and just actually start it. And the funny thing about it is this isn't even the most complex thing that I've made as far as charts go. I have knit a lot of stuff with charts and I in fact have a few tricks that make it really easy. So I had to remind myself that I have the tools to do it and just get started on this cardigan. And since I reminded myself that I'm perfectly capable of making this cardigan without it feeling like a slog, I also reacquainted myself with the techniques that I use while knitting charts, and these things can help me really enjoy the process. So I figured I would share with you what I'm doing to make knitting this cardigan kind of a breeze. So the first thing that you need to make working with charts really easy is stitch markers. Just put a stitch marker at the beginning of each chart repeat. Doing this is gonna make it really easy for you to know when you start the repeat and when you're supposed to finish. So if you're supposed to be on a purl on that last stitch and you're on a knit, then you know you messed up and you only need to go back to the beginning of that repeat and redo that. You're not gonna get to the end of your round and find out that you messed up. When I do this, I very rarely find that I've made mistakes that travel past the repeat and it's really Really nice to know at the end of each repeat that I've done it right. So the next thing that I do whenever I'm working with a really complex chart is to subdivide the chart. 
Now, I wouldn't do this on a six stitch repeat like in this little wave cardigan, but let's say I'm working on this frequency pullover by my friend Tommy Schaefer. They've designed a beautiful sweater, but it's got long chart repeats. So in order to make this more digestible for myself, I would just subdivide this chart so that I'm only paying attention to little chunks of the row at one time. This just makes it easier for me to track. I do this really simply by drawing a line on my chart and then where that line is on my chart, I would put a stitch marker in my work. So I know where each section of the chart would begin. Finally, and this is really important, you wanna have a lot of different colors of stitch markers that you can use to indicate different things in your work. So at the beginning of each chart repeat, you could use one color to indicate that that's what that stitch marker means. Then if you did decide to subdivide your work, you could correspond a stitch marker color to the color that you use to draw that line in your chart so that you know when you get to that stitch marker that you're at that point in your chart. Finally, you can use any other colors to indicate anything else you need to know, such as on my Little Wave cardigan, I use pink stitch markers to indicate the beginning and the end of this garter stitch panel that runs up the side of the body of the sweater. Doing this means that each time I come to a stitch marker, I know what that stitch marker means, the colors are all meaningful, I gain a lot of information on each row just from looking at the stitch markers, which means that I have a little bit less to think about when I'm working the body of the sweater and I can just pay attention to the chart repeats, know when they begin and end, and be less likely to mess up. Now I have this little set of stitch markers that has worked really well for me in the past. I know these are from Amazon and I can't find the exact item. I've left a couple links down below for something super similar. So if you want some stitch markers that don't cost a lot and give you a lot of color options so you can track whatever you need to track, then head down to the description and you'll find a link. It is an affiliate link. It costs you nothing extra, but it does support my channel when you use my affiliate links for Amazon. So thank you so much. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please hit that like button down below Low. It helps my channel grow and it helps me know what kind of content you enjoy. And if you haven't already and you want to stick around for more knitting and yarn related videos, then hit that subscribe button and the bell next to it to get notified when I post new videos. I'm going to continue working on my Little Wave cardigan and the like million other projects I seem to have going right now. And I will talk to you next time.